So hello guys, uh, back with another video and this time kind of a special one because today it's not going to be me who tears down that graphics card, that wonderful GTX 750 there. It's going to be my dear friend Ziku or, or, or whatever, yeah. how you pronounce the name. I still can't do it. So um, this is a GTX 750. Uh, it's also from Perla just like the GTX 650. So a lot of this card should look familiar uh, also with the PCB I already showed it to you in a 650 video and I think he's gonna start now tearing this card apart yeah. and he's also gonna ta talk a bit <laughs> at first uh, we have to uh, to have uh, the screws to um, take apart these uh, shrouds to uh, yeah access yeah, the, the little the fan uh, is connected to the shroud and it's a separate piece from the heatsink so you gotta take out that shroud first get out these four little screws and then you can tackle the main heatsink with the four GPU screws So now the shroud is off, and do do you also want to do some talking? Uh, no. <laughs> I <guess> okay. <laughs> I guess. Uh, so yeah, now he's he's taking out the fan cable, and this time the shroud actually stayed on the board. That was a big issue, especially with the 1070 Kay. that he now owns. He, well, he's the guy I was talking about in the 1070 video. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I I, I said like. Um, <laughs> so next step would be to. Uh, screw off these four screws to uh, take off this uh, little uh well the aluminum yeah. block or aluminium depends on where you live to and uh, access the core yeah one thing you want to remember is to re remove the screws in a cross pattern so um, you do it like like this like you first remove that this one and then, then that one then because you want to um, spread the stress of the heatsink uh, of removing it of uh, t uh, taking it back on I want to s uh, spread the stress evenly uh, across the PCB and the GPU because otherwise you might damage it. Uh, there that was the sound of the heatsink hitting the table. <laughs> <laughs> kind of a relief. Normally these heatsinks stay on because all the thermal pads and the thermal paste hold them on but that's just a really small GPU here so so yeah, yeah basically there you see uh, the aluminum block and the uh, GPU uh, we have about uh, four uh, not, not about it's exactly four <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, four uh, VRAM uh, ships v and yeah well you uh, can you can you show on the camera which sub vendor they are from uh, so just hold it next to the camera and wait for it to focus they are from that might be a bit uh, uh, too close. Yeah. Wait for it to focus. Then, so yeah, there you can see it. Uh, it says Samsung, uh, Samsung on there. So these are Samsung memory chips, GDDR5, like basically anything today. Everyone about uh, uh, five hundred and twelve megabytes. So it's got two gigabytes of VRAM. Mm -hmm. um, then you, <laughs> you want to talk about the VRAMs? Mm. <laughs> so. Uh, that's that's kind of a tricky. Oh, sorry, bumped the mic. So that's kind of a, a a tricky part on these smaller PCBs because you don't really know what is what. Um, so, and it it's kind of hard hard to see uh, what it's part of the VRM and what is not, um, because this is the same PCB that the t uh, 650 uses. I would say that this one choke is the one phase for the memory, and these two are the two phases for the core, and then we have. Uh, these MOSFETs here, uh, I think these two are part of the VMAM VRM, and then these four, but also these two additional ones. Uh, so there might be three MOSFETs per V-core phase, 
or these two might also belong to the memory. So there are two MOSFET, uh, 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 four MOSFETs for the one phase and then four f MOSFETs for the two phases on the V core. So next step would be uh, to take off the old thermal, uh, yeah, the old thermal paste and replace it with some new. For this, uh, we use some uh, paper and also some cleaning petrol. Uh, you wanna be careful with that because uh, you don't oh, want to spill anything. That kind of. Uh, yeah, just, just yeah, yeah. <laughs> We're doing some weird stuff off camera right now. So now that, that that's enough, I put it uh, yeah. back there. Um, and now you just use the toilet paper and you want to be careful with these small SMDs around the uh, GPU I know. because if they fall off the card is dead <laughs> so just carefully around uh, on the GPU you can also um, you can also use these That's for That's polishing good. and uh, being a little bit more careful. The light is kind of awful in here, so... Yeah, yeah let's just take it like this and... Maybe polish it a bit and then you can show them what GPU is under there. So I think that's enough. Yeah. Don't really have to clean all the uh parts. So uh, you can see it's uh wait for it to focus and then now it has. See it's a uh I just forgot it. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's a GM one oh seven three hundred A two. And uh well the uh <laughs> crazy part about it uh, it's a Maxwell uh, car in, in a uh, Kepler uh not, not in a Kepler in the 700 series so all, all the uh, 600 and 700 series GPUs are Kepler architecture but not the 750 the 750 uses first gen Maxwell which is why there is a GM and not GK on there like with the 780 Ti um, that's also why all the 900 series GPUs have uh, begin with two because these use Maxwell second gen. This is Maxwell first gen on the. Uh, Sorry. I bumped the mic. <laughs> on the uh, uh, 750. Which might also uh, be the reason why this card is so power efficient. Like, um, uh, uh, my 780 Ti was like 300 watts. The crazy power hungry with its two 8 pins. And this one doesn't even have any additional power other than from the PISA Express load. So if we take off this. Slot cover, you can see that PCI uh, Express uh, interface, and it just gets its power through this little bit. So these are up to 75 watts, as far as I know. So, after we cleaned all the parts, you can now proceed. And we can yeah proceed uh, by applying the thermal, the new thermal paste yeah. in the core. And and this time we gotta uh, we are going to use the uh, arguably cheap Cooler Master V1 thermal compound because Please. I don't want to waste uh, any cryonaut on a card <laughs> like this. I just don't remember. Hmm? In which uh, which direction? Uh, these this where the where the yeah. upper? So the uh, there's some airflow around the uh, VRAM modules. So. so now you wanna put on. A tiny little bit, so that's enough. That's enough. That's maybe already too much. And if you want to, you can also use that tool to uh, uh, spread it around. Isn't really necessary on such a small GPU like the cooler will do everything. But if you want to, you can help it a little bit with that. So uh, try lowering the angle a bit on this tool and use yeah. it a bit like like this. 
otherwise it, um, you're not going to spread that. Yeah, should be fine about it. The uh, CPU cooler should uh, do the rest mostly. Maybe. GPU cooler, not CPU. GPU. I'm sorry. So maybe using up that last little bit of thumb paste that's stuck on the uh, yeah. So it's it's not a perfect uh, application, but the cooler will do the rest. So you can um, no put it uh, no not put it on like this. You like wanna position the cooler on uh, the table and then like this, and then put the card on with its I.O. shield hanging over the table, so we have to pull the camera back a bit for you yeah. to see that. So you put it and like now you wanna this? align the screw holes with these. And now so the camera is shining against the camera stand, so now, now you can see it better. So basically, uh, search for the screw holes and... Yeah, I can see them. Place it. Place it down. Ho hold it down a bit. And I'm gonna hand you these screws. I just got them here. And just screw it in uh, as much so the uh, the cooler doesn't come off again. Don't screw it down all the way because again we want to spread the stress evenly across the PCB and the GPU. So that's enough. screw on the uh, aluminium block goes in and now I can screw them all down so if everything sits tight you can now connect the fan cable again and then align the shroud to also screw that back in So, fan cable is in. Then go again upside down, place graphics card right over the holes. <coughs> Sorry. And kind of I think you, you have to you place the uh, yeah, screw hole. Yes, I meant to say it's good misaligned. But I know it was. Now. Kind of messy thing. Now. Yeah, these are kind of hard to get in. I also think you screw directly into the plastic of the shroud, like there's no like metal you screw in, so... Really not that strong of, an, of a, a mounting system, but I think it's enough for... Well, this is a mid-range GPU. And you also want to uh, check if you have all of them in. You wanna check to screw them all down all the way, otherwise the shroud is gonna whack around a bit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can okay. turn around and right now. It's uh <laughs> done. We have yeah. assembled all the parts. We have changed the uh thermal paste. And yeah. Yeah, that's basically it. Pretty fast episode, just fifteen minutes. <laughs> uh, now you now you see how much I ramble in all of these videos, like the seven eighty Ti video was like thirty eight minutes. So 
Yeah, but but the 1070 was arguably a, a harder to take apart card, especially because it had a backplate with a lot of screws. So basically, I'm I'm gonna stop rambling now because this episode also is 30 minutes long. And do you have any final words to say? No, I guess. Just hope you enjoyed it, uh, the little teardown, a teardown, and yeah. So yeah, that's basically it. Um, yeah. Then until next time. Bye. <laughs>